I wasn't expecting to be excited about image to video, but I guess I am. I can really see how this will help AI filmmakers bring their imaginary worlds to life. I tried out the same reference images with two different tools, Pika Labs and Runway, to try and understand the difference. Spoiler, Pika Labs gives you more control by letting you write text prompts to guide what animates in the image, but Runway gives you much higher and sometimes stunning quality, but with almost no control. And if you're looking for the free option, that would be Pika Labs. All right, let's take a look. The first image here is a geodesic dome desert community, and I wanted to have someone riding by on a horse. With Pika Labs, I was able to do exactly that by writing a prompt to go with the image. It looks pretty good. I mean, it's kind of a weird looking horse, but it's exactly what I wanted. Here's the runway version. This is like completely stunning that I can take that image and create this video. Um, here they are side by side. Um, so the, the runway footage is absolutely, in my opinion, the quality is much better, but the Pika one is what I was actually looking for. I, I didn't just want to animate the video. I wanted to have something specific happen in the video. So in the second example here, I had someone with headphones on staring out the window of a bus. And so what I wanted to do was animate the traffic outside the window. So you'd see the traffic go by. So, and I can do that. I'm not sure why her hair is blowing. Maybe the window is down, but you can definitely see that the traffic is going by. Things are passing by on the window. With runway, we get some very realistic motion of her head while she's moving around a little bit, but it's a stationary bus. So it's kind of a trade-off. It's a great looking shot, very realistic, but the trade-off is the motion is her and not the background. And I wanted the background to be the thing that was in motion. Being able to add a, a text prompt to the image allowed me to do that. Here's one where runway clearly shines. It's sort of an apocalyptic London in the future. The whole thing is on fire. And as much as I tried with Pika, I just couldn't get the right amount of fire. It just is kind of all over the place and, and not very realistic. With Runway, this is an amazing shot, I think. You get the, like, if, look at the look at the way that the flames reflect in the water, too. I think that that's amazing. I think they do a great job. So this is what Runway is awesome at. You have the establishing shot. You have sort of like your, your scenic portrait, and it just creates an amazing animation from that. All right, back to horses. Um, I wanted to have this, uh, this cyber cowboy riding a horse through a town. Um, and I just kind of pictured like maybe the horse and the rider are moving closer to the camera. Um, I wanted to have dust in the background, like the horse is kicking up dust. They're both moving in different ways, but they're not really having the horse walk toward uh, the camera at all. It, and I know that's a lot to ask for. I totally get that. But that's, that's what I was hoping for with that one. So I, I'd say they both kind of failed this test. So this last one here, there's this guy walking down a path in the autumn. I wanted to have him walking down the path, but also a few leaves falling from the tree. I didn't want a lot of leaves. Like I could picture just like leaves tumbling down. I just wanted a few leaves here and there. Um, so Pika Labs is pretty good. There's a few, there's like a lot of wind rustling. With Runway, there's this one, which is like the animation, like there's the camera movement of the trees um, the, the movement, like you can actually see he's taking steps forward and moving where the Pika Labs guy is almost like on a treadmill, just kind of walking in place, um, which is fine because it looks like a natural cadence of walking, but he's not moving. Whereas the person in runway is actually, you know, making strides and you can see on the leaves, he's, he's progressing on the sidewalk, um, which I think is kind of cool. This brings up another thing with the runway. Um, if you look at the reference image, um, it's really far away from the image that I gave it. The Pika Labs one looks very similar. It's, it's a lot blurrier. It's not as sharp, but it's definitely the same backpack, the same hat, the same pose. So I added a text prompt in Runway and it completely changed the look of the final video. Just to show you what this looks like in Runway when you add a text prompt. So here's the picture of uh, the woman sitting on the bus. If I use the same exact prompt that created the image in Mid Journey, um, this is what I end up getting. And it looks nothing like the, the image that I use as the reference here. You know, so I thought, well, maybe I'll just, maybe I'm being too complicated. Let's just simplify it and tell it what we wanted to change in the video. So I just said, the city passes by out the window. And again, it's like now there's, we're not even on a bus anymore. So 
like I said, stunning quality, absolutely with Runaway. Um, but the the level of control that you might want it isn't there yet. I'm sure it will be eventually, but it's just not there right now. You know, with Pika Labs, you have more control because you can do the text prompts. You can add horses walking through, uh, you know, the, the domes. You don't have to just zoom into the geodesic domes in the desert. You can say, I want something to be in that scene as well. So it's not necessarily that one is better than the other. It's just that they do two different things, even though they're both image to video. Just one more example of what I mean with Pika Labs is that, you know, here's a here's a portrait mode video of a DJ and it's just like, okay, the DJ is spinning records. Um, and that looks kind of weird, but then it was like, okay, the DJ's hands are up in the air. Um, so you can get that flexibility to try different things. And especially right now, cause it's free, you can just have that ability to explore and bring your still images to life in different ways. I think this is a really cool addition to an AI filmmaker's toolbox. It's pretty fun. I mean, I can really see this being a game changer when it comes to establishing shots or setting the tone or the world that your video is going to be in. So go play around, have fun, and uh, let me know if you make something cool.